So last, was it last night you came up? Monday. Monday night, Adrian here came up, I believe it was right there, or somewhere right in there, and I knelt down and I asked, what do you need? And, and he told me. So you take it from there and tell us what's happened. Well, Monday night when Mr. Clark was handing out the books, he had handed out a book on identity, and that's why I had to get to him. And I knew I could went to the bookstore and get it, but something kept telling me, no, you need to go ask Randy Clark what the title of that book was, and you need to ask him specifically. And I was like, no, no, I'm just going to go to the bookstore. But anyway, I made my way up here. The, the crowds parted like the Red Sea because I didn't know how I was getting here. And... I asked him the title of the book, and he told me, and he said, well, why do you need it? I said, I lost my identity quite a few wars ago, and I was trying to find myself. And he said, you don't need that book. Let me call up a team member to pray for you. Yeah. Well, what was even better was that I think, I don't know, I'm speaking on your behalf, but I feel that he sensed that if he left me to wait for the team member, I was bolting for the door. Because I was scared, I was terrified, I was getting surrounded by the crowds, I was nervous, I wanted to get out of here, I was looking for a threat. But he didn't let me go, he took his mic off and he sat with me. Can't thank you enough for doing that for me. Before I go on, there is freedom in Jesus. <clears throat> I didn't come here to get prayer for PTSD. I've come here because I've been living with chronic nerve pain in my arms and legs for the last five year, five plus years now, until tonight. And I met a couple in Lubbock, Texas, not where I'm from, but where I retired to, that was from associated with Bethel, and they prayed for me, and that was the first time I ever experienced real prayer. That's where my breakthrough started was April of 2011. By September of 2011, I came to visit the healing rooms. I was in a lot of pain. I, I just looked at my medicine records a few days ago. I had six or seven sheets of medicine with about 15 to 20 meds per sheet that I've been on in the last uh, five plus years. Long story short, I was seeing breakthrough and it was coming, but it was slow. It didn't happen overnight. Sometimes it would go away and it would come back. So I'm thinking, why do I have to deal with this PTSD? I came here for my nerve pain. God, what is going on? I want this pain out of my body because it's like cutting yourself with razor blades, having acid poured on your skin and your bones crush 24-7. You can't breathe. I couldn't play with my kids. I couldn't be with my wife. I lost my love of music because the, the, the sound and the vibration was so intense. I have to sit at the back of the church or by the exit. I couldn't stand bright lights. So my senses kind of got dulled. All that's gone. And so when Mike came and, and prayed for you, uh, did, did, what happened? Uh, Mike came and prayed for me, and he held on to my wrist. And I started to panic because I did not want to be restrained. And I think I could take Mike. He's a big guy, but I think I could take him, <laughs> even in my weakened state. But what Mike did for me and what Jesus did through Mike to me was he made me look at his eyes, and he wouldn't let me put my head down. And I kept wanting to put my head down because I didn't realize the guilt and the shame I was carrying from the horrific and horrible events that I cannot even put into words, nor do I want to, because I don't see those images anymore, and I don't feel that pain. <clears throat> On the 10th of January, I went to my doctor with my wife. You know, I've been about 100 different doctors and specialists for my nerves and the PTSD, and I asked him, I said, uh, does PTSD ever go away? You know, can it be cured? Is there medicine? What's the answer? Because, I, I, you know, I'm always thinking about taking my life. I'm always, and everything's intense for me and my family. And they said, no, you don't ever lose PTSD. Well, the devil is a lie, and so is that doctor. <laughs> Amen. 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 So Monday night, I, you know, I got prayer from Mike, and as he was praying for me, I was crying. I was sweating, he, and I kept putting my head down. He said, look in my face. I said, don't tell me what to do. And he's like, I'm not letting you go until you look at me. And so he just kind of walked me through the stages, and I can't even tell you what all of them were. 
But it was a short prayer. It was only five minutes. It wasn't nothing deep, but it was like Jesus was touching my hand, and he was speaking to me, and I felt a peace that I haven't felt since I was probably a young child. And I walked in the door of my house Monday night, and I kind of floated in the house, I guess. <laughs> and my wife said to me, she said, Babe, what happened? I said, I'm free. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> Let's stand and praise the Lord for days and freedom. <laughs> so happy for you. And you couldn't have normally got up in front of this many people and stood in the light, could you? Hey, man, you are free. Yeah. yeah. My wife told me, she said, babe, it looks like you've lost 2,000 pounds off your shoulders, and I don't know who you are because she's only lived with me since I've had this PTSD. She's lived through the nightmare. She's lived through being attacked in my sleep. She's lived in fear. My kids have dealt with it. She's lived through all the medication. But since then, in the last two days, I've played with my kids, I've held them, I've hugged them. I haven't been afraid of what's on TV, what's outside. And even better, when I, before I came here tonight, I just gotta say this, I was still having the pain in my wrist, but I said, God, you've been so good, you've already brought me through, you got me out of bed, you got me out of the wheelchair, you got me off all these medications and narcotics. And tonight, when I go there, it's gonna be done. And I don't need prayer because I'm just going there to glorify what you did for me. As I was sitting in the lobby over there, at five minutes to six, I was sitting there waiting for him to open the doors. And all of a sudden, I felt my left hand. And I looked down, and I was like, hand? You're back. And nobody prayed for me. There was no worship going on. I got on the phone and I called my wife and I said, thank you, Jesus. Not only am I at peace, I have no more pain. I can touch my hands. I can cut my hands. I can feel my fingers. I can dance. And the music didn't hurt me. The legs don't hurt me. The devil's alive. Jesus came me. Father God is so great. He brought me home. My Father in heaven, thank you for bringing me home and rescuing me and giving me Yes! <laughs>